in the first part of this lecture we talked about uh, mathematical modeling of mechanical systems with translational displacements uh, we discussed a simple mechanical system and obtained its mathematical model we introduced the concept of mechanical impedance in this part of uh, the lecture we shall talk about mathematical modeling of a more complex system that is uh, described by this diagram we have uh, object m1 uh, and another object with mass m2 uh, this object uh, with mass m1 is connected to a spring with spring parameter k1 one end of this spring is fixed and cannot move the other end of this spring is uh, connected to this mass m1 there is uh, another spring with the spring constant k2 one end of the spring is connected with mass m1 the other end of the spring is connected with mass m2 there is a, a viscous damper one end of this damper is connected with mass m1 and other end of this mass is connected with mass uh, m2 we have a third spring one end is connected with uh, mass m2 and the other end of this spring is fixed these uh, two objects with mass m1 and m2 are moving on this uh, fixed surface therefore there is also friction between this moving object m1 and uh, this fixed structure likewise there is uh, also friction between this object and fixed structure the friction coefficients uh, are fv1 and fv2 we want to obtain a mathematical model for this mechanical system the first uh, step uh, in obtaining mathematical model uh, in mechanical systems is to identify the linearly independent displacements so we can see that this end of the spring is fixed and cannot move and this end is moving when some force f of t is applied on this object so let's call uh, this displacement displacement as x1 of t uh, as you remember we were considering uh, rigid masses that is this end of the mass and this end both of them have the same displacement therefore uh, this uh, displacement is x1 also this end of spring will have the same displacement but the other end can have different displacement thus we call uh, we name the displacement of this end as x2 likewise for the damper this end has displacement x1 the other end can have different displacement uh, let's call it x2 the same as this mass both the ends of this mass this side and this side they have the same displacement and that uh, is therefore x2 for this spring this end has displacement uh, x2 and the other end is fixed you remember that uh, uh, for obtaining mathematical model uh, we op we first draw a free body diagram but over here uh, situation is a little bit more complex in the previous example one end of the spring was fixed and the other end was moving but over here both the ends of the spring are moving likewise both the ends of the damper are moving so how to analyze such situations uh, to analyze uh, such situations what we do is we apply superposition that is uh, in obtaining the free body diagram of for this displacement what we do is first we keep this object fixed that is this object is not moving and uh, determine all the forces which are acting on this object in the second step what we do is uh, we keep this object fixed and move this object in this, this uh, direction and determine 
all the forces which are acting on this object. Uh, this is demonstrated uh, over here. We have object M1 and uh, if we keep this uh, M2 fixed and move M1 in this direction, what are the forces acting on this object? Firstly, there is a force applied by this spring. Uh, if this uh, object is moving towards right, this spring will apply a force towards left. And what will be the magnitude of that force? The magnitude of this force will be proportional to this displacement x1. That is, the force exerted by this spring on this object is towards left and its magnitude is k1 into x1 of s. We are directly writing everything in s domain. Similarly, the force exerted by this uh, uh, friction uh, that is proportional to velocity and uh, that is given by fv1 s x1 of s. There is external force uh, applied to this object uh, which is f of t. Now uh, the uh, force due to inertia that is proportional to acceleration in the object and it is always uh, it always opposes the direction of uh, displacement. Uh, therefore its direction is towards left and its magnitude is proportional to acceleration in Laplace domain uh, s square multiplied by x1 of s. Now to determine the force uh, due to this damper uh, we have first kept this object fixed and moved this towards right. If this object is moving towards right this damper will apply a force towards left and the magnitude will be proportional to the derivative of this displacement r in Laplace domain that force is given by fv3 into s uh, multiplied by x1 of s similarly f uh, the force exerted by the spring we have kept this fixed and we are moving this towards right so if this object moves towards right this spring will exert a force on this object towards left and its magnitude will be proportional to the displacement x1 of s. This is uh, uh, this uh, diagram free body diagram shows the forces which are acting on this object when this object was fixed and this was kept fixed and this was moved in the direction of x1. Now uh, if this is uh, moved and this is kept fixed then this diagram shows the forces acting on the this object. If we move this object towards right this spring will tend to pull this object that is it will exert a force towards right and the magnitude of that force is given by k2 x2 of s. Likewise this uh, viscous damper will also exert a force towards right and the force exerted by this damper will be proportional to the derivative of the displacement r in Laplace domain the force exerted by this damper is fv3 s into x2 of s so this is free body diagram for this object when this was kept uh, stationary and this was moved towards left and this is free body diagram for the same object when uh, this object was kept stationary and this object was moved in the direction of x2. The overall free body diagram is obtained by combining these two free body diagrams which is done on the next slide. Here these are the two free body diagrams which were shown on the previous slide. By combining the two we have this free body diagram. That is uh, uh, K1 and K2 
these are both uh, the forces are towards left and therefore are lumped together in this term likewise fv1 fv1 and uh, fv3 uh, both are acting towards left and therefore are lumped over here this external force f of s and the this uh, is the force due to inertia kx2 is this force and this term is over here that is the overall free body diagram for the first displacement x1 is obtained by combining these two free body diagrams now once we have this free body diagram writing the uh, corresponding force balance equation is not a difficult task force balance equation can be obtained by uh, writing the sum of forces acting towards left uh, that equ will be equated to sum of the forces acting towards right that is uh, the sum of the forces acting towards uh, left and sum of the forces acting towards right this force is acting towards right but it is brought to the other side of equality therefore a negative sign over here up to this point we have uh, only modeled uh, we have obtained the differential equation or the equation corresponding to displacement x2 the same procedure will be re repeated for the other that is we have obtained the free bar we had obtained free body diagram for this object and uh, now we obtain free body diagram for this uh, displacement again the uh, procedure is same we apply superposition first we keep this object stationary and move it in the direction of x2 and determine what forces are acting on this object and then we keep this object stationary and move it in this direction to determine the forces acting on this object so those forces are shown over here uh, this free body diagram corresponds to the situation when this object was kept fixed and this was moved in the direction of x2 if we move it in the direction of x2 and keep it stationary what will be the direction of force that will be exerted by this spring on this object if this object is moving towards right this spring will apply a force towards left and the magnitude of force will be proportional to this displacement that is written over here k2 x2 of s likewise for this uh, dam uh, this friction uh, if this object moves towards right the force friction force will oppose uh, uh, the direction of displacement and the magnitude will be proportional to uh, the velocity of this object or in f s domain we have f v2 s into x2 of s for this damper if uh, this is kept fixed and this moves towards right this damper will apply a force towards left and magnitude of the force will be proportional to the derivative of x2 that is uh, this force is fv3 s x2 the force uh, due to inertia uh, that is given by m2 s square x2 of s and if this object moves towards right the spring will apply a force towards left the magnitude of that force will be proportional to this displacement x2 therefore the force exerted by this spring is k3 into x2 of s this is free body diagram for this displacement when this was this object was kept stationary and this was moving towards right now we repeat the procedure we keep this object fixed and move this object in this direction and determine what forces are acting on this object so if we move uh, this object towards right uh, this uh, spring will tend to 
push the object that is this spring will apply a force on this object towards right and magnitude of the force will be proportional to the displacement or the compression in the spring that is k2 into x1 of s similarly for this damper if this object is stationary and this object moves towards right this damper will tend to push this object that is it will tend to apply a force towards right the magnitude of that force will be proportional to derivative of this displacement or in s domain uh, the force is fv3 s x1 of s so these are two free body diagrams obtained by first keeping this object stationary and this moving and then uh, this diagram obtained by keeping this object stationary and this object moving the overall free body diagram for this displacement is obtained by adding these two uh, free body diagrams and that is shown on the we have uh, the forces all the forces shown over here obtained from the two free body diagrams on the previous slide thus uh, uh, the forces acting towards some of the forces acting towards left is equal to some of the forces acting towards right uh, and uh, when these terms uh, these terms brought to the left hand side so we have a negative sign over here uh, since there is no external force acting on it so uh, here we have this term equal to zero so uh, overall uh, mathematical model for uh, the mechanical system uh, is described by these two equations uh, these equations were explained on previous slides and these two equations uh, are comp comprise of the total overall mathematical model for that mechanical system now if you are interested in obtaining a transfer function between uh, x2 of s and f of s uh, we can uh, proceed in different ways we can either eliminate x1 of s from both the expressions and finally obtain a relation between x2 and f of s otherwise we can apply Cramer's rule and by Cramer's rule the transfer function is given by this expression where delta is this determinant uh, you need to uh, do this uh, uh, at your home this is your homework expand uh, uh, apply the Cramer's rule to obtain this transfer